guys, how's it going? Welcome back, of course, to the Time Bomb channel, and I hope all is good in your part of the world. Watch review of the Alemano 1973 Shark and Crab Depth Gauge Reissue. Um, as you can see, it's quite a splendid uh, presentation, and when I picked this up uh, from uh, the guys over at First Class Watches, they asked me, what do you know about the brand? And I said, not very much, uh, but I saw them on the website, and it kind of looked a little bit mental, and they chuckled and they said, yes, the brand are completely bonkers, and one look at this packaging confirmed that assessment. I certainly haven't seen any other watches uh, recently presented in this particular way, um, and it piqued my curiosity. Let me just um, uh, un undo the boxes, and uh, we can we can have a look at the watches. Okay, and as I was just talking about first class, of course, um, if you're interested in uh, this particular watch or any other Alemano, Alemano uh, just tell first class watches that you've come from the Time Bomb channel, and I'm sure they're going to do their best to help you out with uh, pricing. Um, so yes, there is our watch, um, and it's quite a, quite a handsome beastie. And then secondly, within the packaging, as you will notice, um, it's not just the reissue of the watch, it's the reissue of this, uh, fine looking, uh, depth gauge as well. Um, so it, the, the depth gauge is again, something that the, the brand are famous for, um, back from the 1970s, hence 1973, the reference, um, it's, it's brilliant, it's purist, it's old school, who needs dive computers, and how cool is that thing going to look in your uh, man cave, or alternatively on your wrist, should, I don't know, do any modern divers actually use depth gauges anymore? That's a really good question, uh, even when I was diving you know, that night long ago, it was all computerised, um, but again, really nice little feature to have in there, and again, lovely bit of brand uh, retro connection there, with their heritage and, and the origins of the brand. Um, let's pop that on one side and just pop the uh, watch off the comfy cushions. So as you can see, all still plastic up there, but let me just give you a quick overview of the watch so you can see. It's quite a big boy. Um, it sort of has a, a little bit of a neo-vintage vibe to it, I think. They retail for around £1,900. So yes, whilst I like it a lot, I'm not uh, sure yet whether it warrants that price tag. Let me just get rid of some of these plastics and uh, we can uh, get closer. Okay, so I've taken off most of the plastics. I'm not going to take them all off um, because, as I say, this is uh, this will be for sale um, as soon as it goes back to the shop. Um, so again, I like to make sure I send these watches back, you know, in the best condition that I can and as sellable as possible. Kicking off with some key specs then. As you can see, as I said before, it's quite a big unit. It's uh, 42 mils across. You add a fraction there uh, with the crown on that cushion, but it's, like it's fairly well balanced, so perhaps not too much. It's then north to south, uh, 50 mils, top to bottom. And again, the end links don't hang over massively on the ends there. Again, so it again is a pretty standard 50 mil. Surprisingly, looking at it, you would think it was deeper, but it's actually just uh, 12 mils deep. Okay and it sits on 20 mil lugs. I do have preferences for bigger watches to sit on, on 22s, but as you can see, I think it's purely down to the design of the lugs there from that cushion case. So I'm getting a lot of uh, misfocus there. And getting, yeah, the, the uh, cushion case, um, as it drops down into the lugs there, that's gonna impact obviously on the width of the, uh, the strappage they can put in there. The watch then comes with 300 meters worth of watery goodness. Of course, it is a, um, a 316 uh, steel, as you probably expect on these things. A little bit of a finger prick magnet. <laughs> I've got gloves on as well. Um, you've got uh, brushed uh, across the top, and then the case flanks, as you can see, are highly polished. And then obviously then you've got that contrast repeating itself there within the, uh, within the bracelet. You do, of course, then get a slab of sapphire up top. And apart from the movement, which is Swiss, these watches are entirely manufactured in Italy. And again, I'm not sure what, what manufactured means exactly in this case. Do they make their own steel? They make their own bracelets? You know, what is that? What does that process actually mean? Or is it just a case of housing and building uh, with put, uh, sort, parts sourced elsewhere? Um, again, kind of nice to have a little bit more detail on that. Uh, just referencing that Swiss movement, it is the Salita SW200-1. It's a solid movement, um, but again, 
Um, they are talking a lot about luxury on their uh, website, and I'm thinking, you know, for £1,900, they could probably give us something a little bit better, um, and that's a, because that's a lot of money for most of us. But what drew me to the watch initially, of course, was that cushion case. You know, it's very, very 70s. It's very, very retro. Um, and I think they've executed it brilliantly. The finishing and the shaping on that, that case body is absolutely brilliant. Let me just throw it on wrist very quickly so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, unsized bracelet. So again, bear with me on that. But my wrist is seven and a quarter inch just for reference. And as you can see, it's an absolute wrist hugger. Um, Seiko really got it right when, when they designed the cushion case. Um, brilliant. Potentially be, you know, a fraction, as I say, my wrist seven and a quarter, and it still sits on the edges of my wrist. So again, if you're a six inch wrist, this is probably going to be way, way, way too big, sadly. Um, yeah, as I was saying, just pop that back off gently. As I say, the, the lug, lugs curvature there, I think that's brilliant so so nice and as well the other advantage with the uh, with the lugs dropping and the lack of undercarriage that they've uh, built into the watch here means that the cushion case gets that full 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 effect a lot of uh, manufacturers end up putting you know really rather a bulbous uh, case back on the back there and of course then that sort of defeats the purpose <laughs> objective of the lugs Almost my favorite favorite case body uh, design that I think I've seen seen in a while really impressed um helium button over there as well obviously uh for the uh the haters i'm sure that'll keep you smiling um the crown let me just zoom in a fraction try and get better focus so the crown then is a, is a lovely lovely big chunky crown um and again nestles within that sort of semi half guard they've gone slightly different approach to the uh the willards and the turtles in that the uh the crown guards um it's essentially it's only obviously you can see that bottom section there um, so interesting way of doing that and it unscrews pretty darn well there is a slight connection i don't know if it's a connection with the um with the guard here or whether it's just because it's very 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 new there's a little bit of uh of connection there as it comes out but um yeah, everything here working really really very well indeed so again very impressive Got a little bit of uh, sticker glue, one second. Yeah, a bit of sticker glue just on the dial there. Uh, let me just move that off. As I say, I'm getting that, that re-screw there. There's a slight, there's a slight feel. Um, it might loosen up a little bit with age. Sorry, let me clean that uh, dial off. Don't like seeing sticker glue on those things. How's that? Better? No, it's still there at that top, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's try and get rid of that. Yeah, feeling better, much better. Um, the oh, sorry, the other thing about the crown is it is um, the A Alemano. Um, but again, I'm just wondering if they, you know, if that was engraved a little bit hastily, you know, if they'd waited a little bit longer and screwed it in, you know, and tested where the screw fits, they could have got it the right way around. You know, they're upside down, that's the tight screw in, kind of a little bit, yeah, just a minor detail. And I think they could have paid a little bit more attention to it. Um, for some reason, um, again, when I was just talk, talking about the bezel and the, and the and everything like that, the bezel design, uh, the appearance of the matte aluminium there reminds me very much of Seiko bezels. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, it sounds very, very positive. Heavy, heavy spring. Really, really, really pleasant spring in that bezel. They've done that excellently. Uh, there's no play whatsoever and sorry with gloves it's a little on the slippy side as you would imagine it's popping back up to the 12 it aligns yeah pretty it's such a strong spring yeah it aligns pretty 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 well no that's off because i've over 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 uh, done it let's try again one more time i did this earlier and it fit and it uh, lined up perfectly no i'm not getting it i think it's because of the uh because of the springing yeah, I think that's about as close as I'm going to get it. It's not too bad, but it is slightly off to the left. And yeah, you can, there you can see just at that top position there, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny wiggle in it just as it sits between clicks. Um, yeah, interesting. 
Um, the the dial, yes. I mean, <laughs> the elephant in the room or the lemon in the room. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful yellow, ultra classic dive watch yellow. And I think they've executed it fantastically. The minute track there sitting up on that um, slightly raised rehort. Um, quite a bit of text on, on the dial. Um, you know, perhaps, you know, chuck with, get rid of the 300 uh, meters there so that then you've just got your Alemano just, just filling that lower space there. The bullseye, obviously, there. I'm not a huge fan. I mean, again, I think for £2,000, they could get the date window, you know, the, the date digit the right way up. Um, it's just, again, just a really odd choice. I mean, the magnifier works brilliantly, as you can see there. It really does enlarge. You look how small that is underneath. Um, so they've picked an excellent piece of magnifying glass to work on there. A second hand as well, I think, in that, in that red with that sort of little, little uh, horseshoe on the back there. Contrasts brilliantly against that. And again, super, super legible. Um, again, very, very impressed indeed. The, um, uh, the bracelet, as I referenced before, was a little narrow for my personal tastes. Um, but again, it's very, very well executed. And the finishing on it as well is superb. Um, it's a tiny jangle. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not ultra, ultra, ultra tight. Um, but again, I don't have too much of an issue with it because I think they've finished it really very well indeed. Sorry, I can't see through the camera. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you've got screw pins uh, on these, thankfully, as well, which is another bugbear of mine. Um, the clasp uh, at the bottom there is signed on the keeper. Um, but, but again, really, really, really odd, odd choice on here. So again, so we've got a beautiful piece of steel inside there. Again, I think they've done it very, very, very well indeed. But then close it, pop the clear stone, and then, yeah, they have no pushers. £2,000 and no pushers. I don't get that. I just think it's such a, such a poor oversight. I really wish they wouldn't do that. That's not fair to anybody. Um, because what ends up happening is you get the top of your thumbnail caught in the top of that. It becomes really, really painful. Just throw some pushers on there, some spring pushers. It's such an easy task. Um, a decent number of micro adjusts though on there. Um, so again, you're not going to have too much of an issue getting this to fit um, exactly as you need it. Um, the loom, I've not seen it yet. So let me just go and take a couple of dark shots. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, the loom is, is, is excellent. A really, really, really lovely positive blue there um, across everything. Um, it's it's well it's well applied. It's evenly applied. I think the only thing that's missing is this, they should have they should have loomed the uh, the seconds hand. Um, it just yeah you can just see that it did you know it disappears. You can see it swing around a little bit. You know, or alternatively, just add a little bit of um, you know loom to some of the uh, to some of the bezel. Um, you know, they're going back to heritage. You know, it's it's called the shark and the crab. You know, it is. It's a dive tool watch. I think yeah, just a you know just a little bit of extra loom elsewhere. Um, but again, that could be uh, just my my personal tastes. Um, so overall, what do I think about it? It's a a, a refreshingly very interesting watch. Um, I think the step from cars and aircraft uh, to wristwatches is one that many brands uh, can relate to. And I think the brand in its recreation of these beauties is very, very lucky to have some very cool history to be digging around in for some design ideas and inspiration. For example, I spotted this one on their website that looks heaps of fun. And I like that they keep that manufacturing again in house. It adds another layer of personal touch and separates them from you know the the, the mass product or the mass produced. Are they a micro a brand? Quite possibly. Um, and it is a brand that I'm going to follow in the hope that they produce something under a thousand pounds. But I feel that their attachment to the luxury label might be too enticing for them to offer me a watch um, that I can afford. So yeah, some interesting positives. So the case body is one of my favorites. Brilliantly executed, really, really nice. The sound and the finishing on the bezel is, is fantastic. But for some reason, I can't get it to align perfectly because it's just out of, out, of, out of sync a little bit. Crown is big and lovely, but it's got a little bit of feel on there. Again, the dial, super retro, clear yellow. I mean, just gorgeous. Really, really, really gorgeous. Um, so yeah, bits of mixes on these ones, I think, you know, and again, put some springers on there. Um, 
it's it's a real mix, and I think for two thousand pounds, I think it, it needs a little bit of something else. But anyway, as always, um, those are just my thoughts. Um, what do you guys reckon? Does it what do, ha, is what they're offering enough to warrant and justify that heavy price tag? You know, what do you think of the presentation with that beautiful uh, retro dive, uh, you know, uh, dive gauge as well, depth gauge as well? Uh, really looking forward to your thoughts on this one because it's something slightly different from what we've had on the channel in the last couple of weeks. Anyway, massive thanks again to First Class Watches for the loan of this one. And thanks to you guys for your time and for your view. And we'll catch you all in the next bit. Cheers now. Thank you.